So when I was putting together this room for our class, um, I did not model a whole bunch of stuff within the same file. Um, these weren't even modeled by the same people. I got some of these from books or my old stuff, student stuff. It's all over the place. Um, what I did is I imported the items into this one file where I had built the walls and the trim uh, and the lights. So that stuff was native to this file. Everything else came from somewhere else, um, which is why if you look at the file, um, some of the things have these weird namespaces on them. Something underscore blah blah blah. Fishbowl underscore revolve surface. Um, which means for the most part they were not named very well. Um, this one was. So what's happening is whenever we import something it's going to put the name of the file before all of the things. Um, and it does that because it's just a little bit too much. Everything in my has to have a different name. Every node has to have a different name. And it's not going to risk having uh, multiple things with the same name. So it puts a namespace in front of it. Now I have this file here. It's a bicycle. Um, and I want to put it into my file. I'm going to close it so there's not two instances of my open because that's just a lot. And we go file, import. And now this is my list of files that I can pull from. I got one here called bicycle. And <clears throat> excuse me, there are options. Uh, for example, you could tell it to group everything together that's coming in. I don't want to do that, but you could. We'll get to references later. <coughs> but the part about the namespaces is this down here. So it says namespace option options use namespace and it really 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 wants you to um, and it says you select a namespace as a parent and add new namespaces um, file name so I can um, make basically everything have the name of the file in front of it so I say import and it says continue because it's asking me about student versions again And it puts the bicycle in the middle, middle of the room because that is where it was in the file it came in on. Now, fortunately, this was all grouped together. Groups are preserved when you import bicycle colon group 9. And everything in this bicycle has that namespace in front of it. Every input has that namespace in front of it. Every shader, should one exist that wasn't Lambert 1, um, would have that namespace in front of it. So, I grab this, and you'll notice that there's a couple weird things that happen. Oh, whoops. That's weird. There we go. How you select things matters a great deal. Um, if you just drag select all the pieces, they're all going to rotate along their own pivot points, but if I select the whole group, I can bring it in here. Um, but it's obviously the wrong scale, so these are modeled all in different places. So I need to, oh crap, oh, I was going to lean it up against that other wall, but see how this is now crooked, because it was crooked in the other file, so I'm going to cheat, I'm going to group it to itself so I can get this group <laughs> that only exists so that I can rotate this properly within the world. There we go. Is that too big for a bicycle? Nah. That's how big bicycles are, right? If you're trying to place something in a scene, it can help to use an orthographic view, um, which can really tell me where things are. Now, if I want to rotate this again, I should really walk back down. I hit down on the keyboard, back down to that bicycle group, because that's where I was tilting it. There we go. And then the rest of placing it I go back up. There we go. So now it's on the floor. And now I can... I want it to be like leaning up against there. Even though I know that's not what would happen and um, it would have to... Actually, no I lied. I'm going to lean up against the table because the table is where it'll hit in a way that makes sense. There, there we go. I like that better. So it's leaning using the um, 
I know it's intersecting a little bit. And in rotating it, did I move it up a little bit? I sure did. This is the trick. You gotta move, rotate, move, rotate, move, rotate. And there you have it. Um, and it's intersecting a little bit probably, um, but if your shot is over here, <laughs> you won't see it. Um, so don't futz too much with something until you know where it's actually going to, you know, where your shot's going to be, that, that kind of idea. Um, but you saw that the bicycle was way too huge. I brought in the fishbowl at one point, it was like the size of the room, um, because we see this grid and we kind of assume it's like the size of the thing you're modeling. So if you're modeling a room, everything gets really tiny because the room is this size when really I should probably have made the room bigger. Um, and then meanwhile, when you model stuff, it tends to be the size of the grid. I will say that there is a little bit of an absolute size to Maya. Um, in terms of you could get too small, um, you're a long ways off from making things too big in here. So if you're making a room and you make it, you know, this big to the grid, you're fine. Um, but if you try to make like a giant gymnasium sized room to this grid, you may run into some absolute scale problems um, from getting just too too small and too, uh, the, the camera will not work the way you want it to when you're trying to deal with the details. All right. Um, but importing, again, it's file import. Know that it's going to rename everything, with those namespaces. Know that right now this is now imported into the scene. It is not attached to the original file, so changing the original file will not change this in here. Um, there's ways to bring it in that that's what would happen, but we're not doing that yet. Um, so just be aware that this is a true import. So once I save this, the bicycle, I'm going to save as and call it something else. Um, room 2. So once you do that, it is it is in here, it is in the file, 